everyone welcome to another wonderful day in our lord and savior jesus christ this is the day that the lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it anyone happy to be alive this morning you know everything may not be going as best as we want it to be but uh, there is something to give thanks to god for amen so we give thanks this day. Welcome to Kingdom Community Fellowship Foundation. And we want to say a blessed, blessed welcome to our online viewers as well as those in house. We pray God's blessings upon you. Right? So this morning, we want to begin with a prayer. So may we all come before the Lord and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your mercies, Lord. Thank you for your blessings, Lord, for your life, for this day, for keeping us safe. The night that has passed, we thank you, dear God. We thank you for breath in our lungs. Dear God, we may not have two legs. We may have one leg, dear God, but we thank you for that one leg. We may not have our hands moving, dear God, but we can breathe. And for those of us who do have our limbs functioning, we say praise be to you, O Almighty God. You have been so good to us when we did not even deserve it. You are worthy, O oh Father, of all glory, all honor, and all praise. We exalt you, O oh God, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and your will shall be done. So we rejoice and say, praise be the Lord. Amen? Amen. So this morning... I want to begin with saying thank you to everyone for coming. I will be hosting today's service, Brother Devon here, uh, just helping uh, our wonderful pastor, Pastor Jason, who is out right now, safe. I don't know where he is, but we pray God's safety upon him. All right? We acknowledge him. We must give acknowledgement to a Apostle, Apostle Smith and uh, Pastor Nicole Smith, we give an acknowledgement as well to Pastor Victoria. Okay, and we give acknowledgement to Pastor Sunil and his wife Grace. I, I must give a shout out to my darling wife and our daughter uh, Sophia, otherwise I am going to get licks if I don't do that. <laughs> All right, so that said and done, let's welcome our worship team with my dear sister, Kimberly. Come and bless the Lord, my dear sister. Hallelujah. Can we give God some praise in this place? Can you make a joyful noise unto the Lord because he's been good to you? Hallelujah, Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. There is none like you, God. You are much less in the heavens and in the earth. There is none that can compare to you. Hallelujah, Lord, we exalt you, oh God, and we thank you, Father, that we are alive this morning, that we're in our right minds, that because you have given us life and you breathe your breath of life into us, that we could come into your house and we can worship your name because you deserve our praise. You deserve our worship for all that you've done for us, for your mercy and for your grace and for all that you have given to us for your provision, for being Jaira, for being Jehovah Sabaoth, for always being there for us every minute of every day. Father, we acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. You alone are God, you alone are King, and beside you there is none other. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be serving a risen Savior? Anybody glad that the God that you serve is so alive and real? Every other religion religiously serves their idols. And our God, if you go to that tomb, it is empty. Anybody grateful that we serve a living God? Hallelujah. So, Father, we welcome your spirit in this place. Hallelujah. Welcome, Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah, we give you all the glory, Lord. Father, you have been so good to us. You have been so good. You've been such a faithful God. You've never failed and you will never fail. You are the great Jehovah and we exalt you, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, O oh God. Hallelujah. I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song.
on somebody just give him a crazy praise this morning hallelujah hey hallelujah hallelujah come on give him the worship that belongs to his faith lift up your voice and give him the glory today ah oh. hallelujah come on lift up a shout of praise in this house hey Sometimes you just have to honor the Lord with everything that you have. Sometimes you just got to praise him. Sometimes you just got to worship. Hallelujah. 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 So I never get weary yet. I never get weary yet. I never get weary praising the Lord. I never get weary. Come on. I never get weary yet. I never get weary yet. Never get weary praising the Lord. I never get weary. I sit down and I cast it down. I sit down and I cast it down. Sit down and I cast it on. Jesus is my soul. Hallelujah. You got to understand sometimes you just have to just go against the greed, against everything. You know, um, you got to speak life and you speak joy. You know, my, my spirit was a little down this for a couple of days now, but you know, I, I still have joy. You know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, and in the midst of it all, you know, he's worthy. You know, he's worthy of it all. Worthy of our praise. Worthy of all the honor. Worthy of all the glory. Anybody know that you serve a very big God? Hallelujah. We serve a very big God. We serve a very big God. He know they fold my hand. He's always by my side. A very big God. I serve a very big God. A very big God. He know they fold my hand. He always by my side. A very big God. I have a very big. I have a very big God. See my God, see my God, not so so wonder if you know my God, He's a miracle worker. Come to on a regular everything and da Blessed be no formula. This my God. He's a very big God. He's a very big God. Come on, I serve. Come on. I serve a very big God. A very big God. Oh. He know they for my hand. He's always on my side. A very big God. I have a very big God. I have a very big God. A very big God. He know it for my hand. He's always like my side. A very big God. Aye. A 
very big. It's a very big one. One more time. Aye. Aye. My God, this my God is a very big God. Amen. 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 Let the church say, yeah. Amen. You may have your seat. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the AC today, but seem to be a little warm so maybe we can try it again i know what's going on but god is good amen god is good amen thank god for a safe journey um we we traveled this week and it wasn't a week we had planned to travel but we needed to travel and sometimes you know when you do things spur the moment that is be a way to for things to go crazy but God kept us amen we landed safely on Wednesday and the only problem is when I got into to check out and to go and to rent the rental car the woman looked at my license and she said that is not a license you know I don't know I always thought it was a license anybody ever had you know and your and your it's a license, but really and truly, it marked driver's permit. So it's not a license. It's a permit. And the permit you give somebody, you know, they, you know, they had to drive with an adult or somebody next to them. That way, just get them a permit. But when you can drive by yourself, you get a license. So the woman refused my Trinidad and Tobago license. So now I had to think about plan B. Because we had no way of getting out of the airport. And, you know, and so I called my friend who's supposed to be my best friend. I said, partner, come and pick me up. He said, no can do. Ah, ah boy, what are we going to do? So we decided to call another good friend. His name was Uber. Right? And Uber decided, we say, you know, instead of using Uber, we could use the brother called Lyft. So we call Lyft, Lyft came showed up after five minutes and lift lifted us out of the airport into the hotel where we needed to go for a dollar you know how it does go nothing for free right we had a lot of stuff to do a lot of wrongs to make and and sometimes you know without a vehicle you can drive and whatever you can do certain things so we had to cut certain certain things out of the you know out of the agenda and just do the most important things. And so we lifted to the bank and lifted to different places. And what I found out about, you know, Uber and Lyft and those guys, when they carry you a place, is a different price to bring you back. Although it's the same amount of miles. If I tell you, drop my port of Spain, you charge me $40. When I reach port of Spain, I want to come back to San Fernando, you're supposed to charge me $40, right? Because I the price. But, you know, I went from one place to the next, they charged me $70. And to come back to where I was, back to my hotel, they wanted to charge me $250. I said, but what madness is this? Because where I was staying was in the city. Where I went to was in the country. And in order for them to get me back to the city, they have to leave the city, go up to the country, and come back to the city. That is not my problem. Find out who next, who living in the country and get them the work. But, you know, fortunately, I call another friend of mine who showed up, albeit a little late, but he showed up. And so we were able to come down for free. You know, I'm, I'm grateful to God. Amen. Free is good, you know. Free is good. Free is good. We have to be grateful for all that the Lord is doing in this season in our lives. The battles that we face and the enemy wants to come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. 
but jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly and so we are grateful for what god is doing all right so my daughter is all signed up amen we do have two more trips and i'm saying who paying for that um she's been selected to be part of a early they select certain students to do a kind of like a mentorship so they just go through and find out who are the best grades and they pick them out to do mentorship and that's a two-year internship kind of program but the sad part about it you had to go up in june which is next month and i just come from there go back up all right and then that is not a school yet her school year ain't start yet so after that finishes in july she come back home and she had to go back in august so you know the money to come back in christmas jumping up because normally they don't stay on campus you carry them home for the holidays but home is a far away <laughs> but to god be the glory god will provide in the midst of it all god will provide and i have learned that in moments like these you just have to give god praise you know and so sometimes the sacrifice you make as a parent because in order for her to get the benefit of what she has now i had to go and endure hardship coldness for many many years and it's not easy when you wake up in the morning and you, you, you could blow your breath you see your breath freezing you know when we when you first move to a cold country there there are some tricks that people just play on you do not follow them the first one is driving on the ice you know so i had a friend of mine he said boy let me go for a ride he driving on the road normal normal and just swing on the lake and driving in the middle of the lake i sat the ball from a dear life because i know you do not drive on real water drive on the road pulling the brake and cascaded and thing i say all right you can only catch me once i thought about jumping out but then i thought i would have drunk so <laughs> let me just stay while well, we go drunk together you understand that you know you go through some things in life they tell you when you get up you know stick out your tongue and put your tongue on on that pole there and see what will happen <laughs> you know people wicked boy you can only catch your ones in certain things you know put your tongue on the pole when you realize your tongue can't move you stick <laughs> you stick to the pole there are some wicked things that people do with you but you figure it out after a while you just figure it out you know your, your boiler a jug of hot water and throw it up in the air and snow falls down you know it is what it is so we struggle for a while in order to you know and sometimes the sacrifices we make for our family you know god knows and god sees anybody else i'm talking about amen and listen i i'm just here to encourage you for a few minutes that god knows exactly what you're going through and he knows how to make a way for you it doesn't be easy sometimes you know many times i want to give up many times i, I say see me let me go back in my war you know when i feel like going to the beach i could just jump in my car and go now if you had to go to the beach it's not no beach anyway because it's not even sea water it's lake and of course you know and they just call it beach to where they had to truck in sand from somewhere else and you go and sit down in that and the water green right and not the good kind of green the mossy green and them jumping and swimming and thing and i i not going in that water they're like canal water too. but they enjoying it we're going on we're going on surf we wind surf and thing on that dirty water i say lord have mercy but god is good you survive went to school you know you graduate at the end of the day you thank god for what he has brought you through and in the midst of it you, you hope that you know what you what you have done and the sacrifice you make will be appreciated i want to let you know there are some people who, who don't appreciate sacrifices there are some people who don't understand the kind of you know we're living in a very very ungrateful season in 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 our history anybody in someone talking about we living in a season where people are being given all kinds of opportunity and they refuse to take it but they will want to rob you of your 20 dollars anybody else i'm talking about 
They pay you. I, I wish I had opportunity like that. They would pay you to go and learn a trade and to learn a craft and to learn something. And, and, and you refuse to go. But when I walk up the street, you want to pull a gun and take my $20. How is that for you? And I've learned what you sow, you have to reap. I'm seeing in this season, and if you look on the TV, you see all these campuses, and now that my daughter is getting ready to go to campus, all of a sudden they riot in. And I pray in real hard because the devil is a liar. So all the campuses rioting, you know, UCLA and Harvard and all these. But all these campuses were built on the money of the same people that they, they want to exterminate. That's the Jews. America was built on the backs of the Jews. Let's be real. They, were, they did well in their business. You know, they did well and they excelled. And many did good. And so if you try to defund the Jewish people, it's like defunding yourself. I have learned in this season that there are people who will jump up in all kind of bandwagon, you know, because they don't know better. I can imagine how these parents f feel, you know, your daughter almost ready to graduate three months from graduation. She going on a protest about something that she don't know nothing about. And the school decide you're not graduating. So your $400,000 you spent over the last four years going, to the, going down to the drain. And they have the right to do that. Especially they, they could refuse to graduate you. And so you have no degree after all these years. It ain't worth it. I have learned there's other ways to protest. There's other ways that you can show your thing. If it was me, I would have get my degree first, da, 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 and then protest how I choose to protest after. But don't jeopardize all these blood, sweat, and tears. Your parents, not you, you know. Your parents suffered for all the loans you got and you had to pay back. There are people who are, you know, they're in my age, and they're still paying back student loans. You know. And I'm saying, my God. And so I've learned in this season, just be obedient to God. Can I talk to somebody? This, I just talked to you for a few minutes this morning. Sometimes God doesn't give you all, you know, he doesn't draw the whole plan for you. He just gives you some key things. He said this morning, he'll tell you, you know, get up this morning and just, just pray. He didn't tell you what to pray for, who to pray for, but just pray. Because at the end of the day, the Spirit of God knows our future. Can I talk to somebody? You know, he knows what you will be facing. Anybody ever get up in certain season and, and you're feeling something go happen, something go happen. I don't know what go happen, but something go happen and you just have to pray because you don't know, Lord, I don't know what going to happen but I trust that you're going to take me through. Anybody know someone I'm talking about? Anybody had to pray some kind of radical kind of prayer, some preventative prayer, whatever the enemy setting up to do, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Can I talk to the church today? There are seasons in your life that you know that the enemy don't want, especially when things are going good. When doors are opening for you, when favor coming in your life, when, when the blessing of the Lord is coming, sometimes it seems that the enemy does want to come up against you, but the devil is a liar. I'm here to declare that no weapon formed against God's people will prosper. And so my prayer this morning is listen to God. Can I, can I tell you? Listen to God, not to people. The arms of flesh will fail you. People will sit, tell you their opinion. But when God speaks, he speaks life. Can I talk to somebody? Listen to the Lord. Sometimes you know, everything going good. And there are people who will come to set you up, to take you out of your blessing. And they tell you, you hear what's going on with the pastor? And you hear about the pastor's wife? And you hear about starting some kind of gossip? Next thing you know, you're looking at the pastor, Kata, and the pastor ain't do nothing. I've learned in this season there are people who don't like it when you're blessed. Can I, can, I, can I be real? Don't think all the people say, oh, you buy a new car. Oh, that look, that's so nice. Yeah. Don't think twice about that. Can I be real? Is that some people know every time you buy a new shoe? That's a new shoe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that people just mind your business real better than you sometimes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not because they like you so much, you know. Can, can, I, can I be real? I, I, you know, I just kind of preach a little real and sometimes, you know, let me, let's just talk the truth for a minute. 
There are people, you know, everybody going for the promotion. And they tell you, Gail, why you not apply? And you say, I want to apply for that. I ain't going to get it. Somebody else going to get it. And Gail, I, you know, you, that's you. I'm going to apply. And then reluctantly you, you apply. And you get the job. Your friend who encouraged you to apply. All of a sudden she stopped talking to you. I want to let you know people that say things. Oh my God. So I've learned in this season. Oh my God. Just you hold on to God. Eh? Hold on to God and forget people. Every blessing that you have is because of the goodness of God. The favor, the doors that was opened to you, testimonies that came is because of the goodness of God. And we ought not to forget that. I had a friend who was trying to get to the U.S. And he didn't have a job. He didn't have nothing to his name. Good friend of mine. And we, we tried everything because he had to go to the embassy to get a visa. And he had no, no way because, I mean, he tried many times, never ever always got turned down and you know we decided we're going to pray and stand in the gap with him something had to work out you know God so good that, that man ended up getting a visa to go abroad and he did well he excelled in many things a matter of fact one year I went up to visit him and the way how we live in I said mm, I should have come too you know, because in life you, you know, God has opened doors, you know. When you're I, I'm talking about, you know, and he from South too, eh? you know, growing up real poor, his mother was a prayer warrior, you know, and grew up real, real poor. I talk, you know, kind of poor is that when he come by me, he wearing half of my clothes because he ain't had nothing to wear. And God does take you through things in life, you know, to show you that he's God. And begin to be blessed and favor and, and everything. But then I realized something when the blessing came. The relationship with God started to slack. There are some people, yeah, I don't know, I, I, that's just me. That's my opinion. That's not scripture, right? There are some people who have to remain poor because they can't handle wealth. There are some people when the blessing comes, they just think it'll be about them. You know, I good, I have achieved this. But it is God. Amen. Anybody understand what I'm saying? It's God who gives to you. What you have is not yours. The wealth that you have is God who allow you. He gives you the ability. He gives you the strength to get wealth. Can I talk to the church today? And so, you know, he began to be famous. He got stuff. He got but God began to be less and less. He, you know, in life, when you, you look at, at people and you understand in this life, the world will take you many places. But many times when they take you to a place, they don't bring you back. That's how the enemy operates. And sometimes you you pray so you would talk and you say, hey, what's going on? I good. Because there are some folks who are always good. They don't need anything, you know, they're doing okay. And then things start to change. And you have to understand when, when you know, the blessing that we have sometimes is before a season. Sometimes door does, doors just open for a moment. Anybody else I'm talking about? You know, and, and I've learned, you know, you know, every time I wear this suit, because he gave it to me, I love this suit, you know, because I just realized I burst a few buttons this morning, so, so the suit don't love me anymore, but, you know, I, had to, I guess I had to go to the gym or something, but it is what it is. And because it, it reminded me of that friendship, you know, we, you know, you know, 
we come to a place where we, we swap positions. I was the helper, now he became the helper. When I migrated to the States, he was there for me, helped me out. You know, my first vehicle, he stand collateral. And, and so the blessing was there. And, and then things started to change. And, and I learned just recently that my good friend, my good friend is, some real, is in some real trouble. I'm um, facing the possibility of spending the rest of his life in prison. And it's not something you could say, Lord, hmm. you know, uh, the only thing that you could say really is, Lord, just have your way. Because at the end of the day, God is God who has the final say. And I, and I say to myself, what I said to myself, you know, you had to be grateful. The only difference between you and him is that you held on to the Lord. Right? Not that you're a better person than him or anything like that, but because you held on to the Lord. I have learned, eh? you see, holding on to Jesus, it will save you from a lot of things. It will save you from yourself too. Because sometimes our real problem is our self. You, you think it, you make it. You reach to the top. I beg. And, and God does have a way of humbling us to let us know everything you have is because of me. Amen. Can I talk to the church today? Amen. I have learned in this season, hold on to Jesus. And so this had me a little sour, this, you know, having, coming back, you know, and, you know, the same day I was getting breakthrough, the same day he was going through, you know, I, and I, I didn't know, right, because we weren't in the same place. But, you know, God is God. You know, I was able to get back my license and everything. Now I have a real license, right, and a permit, right, right. And, you know, and I was in rejoicing and then only to get the news, hey, your friend, what happening it ain't good in the midst of all this i've learned that god doesn't give us all the clues but he just gives us instructions hear what the lord said in joshua chapter 5 hear what the lord said to joshua and i'm going to read from verse 2 he says at that time the lord said unto joshua just take down number one a little bit um at that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. The first time was in Egypt. The first time the men who were fighting age and whatever, they were circumcised in Egypt in preparation to leave. But because of the disobedience of that first group, God decided that they will not enter into the promised land. And so the first group all perished in the wilderness. That's why God had them walking for 40 years. Because he was making sure that none of them will enter into the promised land. And I've learned in this season, the blessing that God wants to release to us, we have to have the integrity to carry it. And if you don't have the integrity to carry it, God will make you walk in circles and he will give it to somebody else. I have learned that when God blesses you, he blesses you to be a blessing. He blesses you to be a witness. He blesses you to be a testimony. Can I talk to the church? And so he tell them, circumcise the children of Israel the second time. And you have to understand how serious that instruction was. That what instruction meant that all of Israel would be defenseless. Because when you circumcise the men, the fighting men, they can't fight. And when you can't fight, you're surrounded by enemies. The worst possible thing could happen. And you know how the enemy operates. He does wait until you are the weakest. He does wait until you, you can't, you know, well, fight for yourself. He wait until you have trouble all around you, then to come to, to, to add to your troubles. Can I talk to somebody? I never hear Satan say, oh God, you know how much things she went through? Let me leash you today. You know, she take a little break. Catch yourself. I'll come back tomorrow. 
He doesn't. He waits until you're at your lowest and he comes even harder. Can I talk to somebody? And so Joshua could have said, you know, I, I, certain his advisors say, you, you think that is a good idea? If you incapacitate all your army, who go fight? You know the Amorites come in. You know the Canaanites come in. You know all the ites and the Jebusites, and all of them surrounding, and the people in Jericho and all. And, and can, I, can I talk to the church? Sometimes when you're facing your greatest battle, God does say, put on your sword. He does say, wait on him. He does say, let go. He does say, stop fighting and wait on me. It don't make no kind of sense. And I've learned in this season, I'd rather obey God than to, to use my own wisdom of man. Can I talk to somebody? Because all of Joshua's advisors would have said, you know, we are do that is not a good thing to do right now. You know, we're not in a good place. We're not fortified. We just crossed the Jordan and we exposed the people from Jericho could come and kill us. They could cross over where we cross and come and kill us. But can I let you know, when God gives an instruction, he makes preparation for that instruction. God don't just speak out a turn. He don't just speak because he feel like speaking. You know, uh, I went to Tobago. Oh God, I shouldn't say Tobago, you know, but anyhow. I don't say it already. I can't tell her what I was going to tell her. <laughs> you know, I, I was on a flight. And, you know, one of the things when I'm flying, especially, you know, what is very, very precious to me is something called sleep. Anybody know what that is? Sleep is very precious. And especially on long flights, you're flying, gonna fly for three hours and, and five hours and thing you want to get in, you know. But it's the worst thing. First, they put me in a middle seat. They give my daughter the end. You know, she ain't giving that up. She had the window, me in the middle, and a fairly healthy woman on the end. And so, you know, the woman can't really fit in her seat. So she fit in, in her seat and half of mine. <laughs> you know how it is. Let me, let me just talk you through it for a minute, right? I in the middle seat and nothing I could do. And so the woman, and I'm sitting in the middle seat and I saw, you know me, I saw trying to get, you know, you know, and the woman, she saw too. <laughs> she have all of her seat, half of mine, and she's still leaning. And then worse yet, all of a sudden, the woman wants to strike up conversation. Now, as a pastor, I love the Lord. I like to witness to Jesus, about Jesus to anybody. But can I let you know, it has some season, I just want to sleep. Really and truly. You know, I can, we can evangelize while we're waiting, while we're talking, when, you know, we're waiting for the play to lie. But you see, when I sit down there, I want to... The woman decides she wants to just be talking and this and that and the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. <sighs> Amen. Trying to get them the hint. I, I've learned in this season, eh? There are some people who don't get no hint at all, you know. They're totally oblivious of everything. And so we go through what we go through. And in seasons in our life, I've learned that, listen, in the midst of all that you have to go through, you know, God is the one who has the final say concerning it. Can I talk to somebody? The Bible says Joshua did and he circumcised all the men. In other words, he obeyed God. I'm here to let you know, obey God and forget people. You know how much people talk you out of the blessing that was supposed to come your way? You go in and open your little store and say, girl, I go in and think I'm going to make some cake and pie and sell anything. You're going in food, food don't make no money. And at the end of the day, they discourage you when God had opened a door to bless you. Can I talk to somebody on someone I'm saying? There are seasons in your life where there are people who, you know, for no reason. And, and sometimes you want to know, but what are they gaining from making you lose your blessing? What do they gain from it? Nothing. But because they're not getting something from it, can I let you know that at the end, they, they, they make sure that you don't get I have learned in this season, obey God, hold on to God, because the, uh, the arms of flesh will fail us. 
And so Joshua ignored all his advisors, ignored everybody, and did what the Lord commanded. Can I talk to somebody who's grateful that the Lord commands us? And when God gave us instruction, he doesn't give us the whole picture. He don't give us, it's like, it's like me when I, when I build it, you know. I just like my contractors to go in my head because I don't really put nothing on paper. Right? Because sometimes when you put on paper, it's like the enemy does no way of thinking and you bring up some kind of... So, all right. And so, we build in. I have... I know exactly what I want. I know... You know, when I see it, I go know it. Don't ask me before. I go tell you when I see it. All right? I'll tell you. And sometimes some contractors don't work that way because they want to, to get joy and they want to get this. They want to get that. They want to get the other. They want to know every little thing where you put in every... But sometimes, you, you know, your plans just change. You know, you're walking through something and, you know, and you decide, you know what, this thing will go good here, you know. And, and, and you change your plans. If you go and spend thousands of dollars to make plans and you change it, you waste your money. So when you settle down in, in your spirit and God already gave you the blueprint, can I let you know your bill according to that? When God speaks to us, he will just give you part of the instructions. He will never give you the full picture. He gives you enough to just be obedient to what he tells you to do. Anybody else I'm talking about? I want you to understand how the spirit of God does work. Because it, it, there has to be a part that you have to play in every breakthrough that you're going to get. God is not going to do it all for you. He will tell you something, be obedient, and it will you to exercise your faith to trust God and watch God work it out. Can I talk to somebody? Joshua got an instruction that made no sense. Why must I, why must I incapacitate my whole army? We now get a victory. But God had already made provisions and he didn't tell Joshua. When Joshua and the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River, at that time the Jordan River was one of the biggest rivers there was. It was really deep and they had nothing to cross. And the people on the other side, they were fairly certain that they were safe. Because the children of Israel couldn't cross that river. How many of us know it are people who think, you know, because they're living in the palace and they have all the cameras and guard dogs and security that nobody could reach them. But I've learned in this season, God is no respecter of persons. You can have all that you have. God can touch you right where you are. Can I talk to somebody you understand what I'm saying? And, and so, in so doing, when the children, the Amorites, what the scripture says in chapter 1, in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites and the, and the, uh, the side of Jordan and the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before the children of Israel. They heard about that miracle because God instructed Joshua and with the priests and, and the water went down to their ankles and they crossed the Jordan River and get to the other side. When some of them who see and some of them who heard about what the Lord had done, the Bible says that their hearts melted. I'm going to tell somebody today, I'm here to let you know that God is going to melt the heart of your enemies because they set up for you. They're coming up against you. They're planning for you. But when they see what God do in your life, uh, can I let you, they go change their minds. Is there anybody ready for God to change the mind of your enemy? Change your mind of your haters. Change the mind of them who don't like you because they recognize, my God, how come you still living? Can I talk to somebody? You're not even supposed to be alive today. Can I look at my own life? I, I just say, boy, God, you're good enough. I get hit by a bus. Yeah, riding a bicycle. You know, hardness is hardness. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord for it is right. But you really have to add another part. You know, it will save your life. You know, my um, uh, uh, brother buy this bike for me. And they tell me, ride it in the yard and around where we live in. All right? Don't go in the road, down the road, nothing. When you tell a boy who is 12 years to ride the bike in his yard, what wait, wait, is he really telling him? Ride it anywhere else but the yard. That's the instructions, you know. That's what he, I didn't know. You just had to translate to 12-year-old to boys, you know. When you tell them one thing, they just hear something else. 
All I hear, new bike, new road. New bike, new road. That's all I hear. Me and here, you know, uh, ride it in the yard, ride it, right? You know, because where we live in, it's all road and the yard bumpy. New bike, new road. So you wait until they go on to work, parents go on to work, and they decide to carry the bike to the new road. Guess where the new road was? The priority bus route. Just get paid. New. Made for buses only. Then it didn't have no maxi on the route. It was only bus. I say, all right, how much bus it have? So I go down and ride. And so I ride in down to Port of Spain. And then something tell me, I think it's the devil. You know? I, I don't know. Devil has talked to people, boy? I wonder. Something tell me, you know, your parents coming home just now. And if they reach home, and you ain't home, you understand, it's licks. And as a young boy, saying, oh God, boy, let me go in tongue, let me go back up the road fast. I just changed lanes. You know, they say, I, I just did my, you know, my license again because I had to do over my, the, the written part. You know, and you, I, I real memorize it. You know, sometimes when you have to, you think driving is easy and you think you know it, but you just forget. And so to get my U.S. license, which is a real license, they told me because I haven't driven so long, I had to go and do over the test, the written test. So I download that app and I learn it and whatever. I thought I know everything. But when I went into the place to do the test, when they asked me the first question, I get it wrong. Now, you could get eight wrong and still pass. But if you get the ninth one wrong, you fail. And while I'm doing the test, you know, after I do the first six, I get four out of the six wrong. I start to panic. You know, when you panic, you just forget. Everything you learn, just going out the door. I say, boy, I spent all this money. I said, I pay $77 to come up here and 200 and something to go back. And you're going to fail? I say, nah. Because you just know when it's the devil talking to you. Because he always tell you negative things. You're going to fail this thing, boy. And, you know, and get more nervous. And I do and do. Let, let, the most relieving thing is when I heard, you have passed. I say, thank you, Jesus. End of that story. And so I recognize in, 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 in seasons like these, the devil does talk. To you and the devil tell me, boy, your mother coming now. You better go back home quick, right, before she reach you. I decide to switch lane. I ain't give no right-hand signal. I didn't. I, I ain't had no indicator on my bicycle. I just, going from going the down lane, I just switched to the up lane. And all I heard was, Ba, ba, ba. What? And that's all I heard. Right? What I remember after that was the driver, the bus. Well, I see everybody face doing so. And so I know something up. I we in the pearly gates, right? <laughs> and so I really thought I was in the pearly gates because I see the driver. I thought I was having an outer body experience. <laughs> I see the driver pulling my bike from under the bus, mangled. But I'm looking for me. I didn't see me. I say, thank you, Jesus. When I do so, I see a couple of white men, as you just call it, a little scratches. I go in and grab my bike from the driver. And the driver looking at me like if I was a madman. All I could study, how am I going to explain to my parents what happened to the bike? One thing you survive. But there's evidence that something went wrong. <laughs> Listen, I tell one of the best lies I ever tell. And I didn't tell my mother until maybe I was in my 40s that it was a lie. Because if any time before that, I would have still get licks. Big man or no. <laughs> I told her, you know, you know the when the bike. I told her, the, you know, I I was I did what you said, 
you know, and I was riding right in the yard and right by the road there. And then I, I went, I was feeling thirsty. I went by the standpipe to drink some water. And then while by the standpipe, the bike fall. And I can't just run over the bike so, mommy. I don't know what is wrong with these people up here. <laughs> oh, my God. That lie lived with me for years. <laughs> Every time I watch... Oh, well, I, I don't know if my mother believed me or she didn't believe me, but oh my God, that lie lived with me for years. I want you to understand, I'm saying this to let you know, obey God. And obey the people of God that he has placed in your life. Because sometimes they give you good, and good advice. You know, sometimes you, you know, and, and sometimes some people don't want to hear nothing from nobody. But God sometimes has put the right people in your way to help you out of your trouble. Can I talk to somebody? There are times you, you don't know, you know, when, when God told me to come back to Trinidad, I say, oh, you're mad. I say, I know by, I know by, I'm, I'm telling you, I just buy a sports model Benz. Heated seats. Moon roof, privacy windows. In other words, you sit down, you can't press a button, and all the windows, some louvers go up, and you, in your living La Vida Loca. You know, when I'm driving my, my partners, and you know, you drive down slow, wherever you, you know, you're passing them, and you say, hey, what's going on? Beep, beep. And you're driving slow. Watch the wheels. <laughs> can I be real? You know, because you feel you make it. <laughs> I reach. Showroom, you know, you didn't, it, you didn't go and, you know, you walk in the showroom, I want that one, you understand, sports model. You man say, you sure? You say, yeah, I want that one. No, all right, drive out, feeling like you're rich. Anybody understand? There are seasons in your life that you just get some blessings of the Lord. All my partners and them vex with me. You just come and you drive in bends. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up on my job, on the work, my boss see, eh? Yeah things in your favor, I say, God is good. You know, because they had to know as a child of God, I serve in the real God. Yeah. You know, everything good, everything nice. You understand? When I come, when my wife, they, she, they coming up from Trinidad, when she came back up, she didn't know I buy the vehicle, you know, and I, I pull up to pick her up, and she walk in the car, walking past the car straight. She and she mother say, hey, beep, 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 it's me. <laughs> she wasn't looking, she probably looking for the old car. You understand? She walked past me straight like right there. She said, who can you borrow? <laughs> God is a good God. And in the midst of it, you can think it's all about you when favor comes and when blessing comes and you get a promotion and thing and you think, oh my God, you made it. But there's are seasons when you think you made it and God said, eh. And so while I enjoy life, God say, you know, you have to go back home. I say, get thee behind Satan. I will not listen. I am blessed and not stressed. Because sometimes when you hear the voice of God and the thing that God wants to tell you, and I believe it could have been a moment like that for Joshua because you, we know getting victory over our enemies and now you want us to incapacitate the warriors and you want them to come and kill us. That doesn't make no sense. But I've seen the hand of God show up in our weakest moments. Can I talk to somebody? Because God wants you to put your trust in him and not in you, not in your ability, not in your blessing. Put your trust in the Lord. Can I talk to somebody? Wow. And so, you know, I pack up the new bands with all my clothes and Everything I want to ship back to Trinidad because it had no shipping where I was. You had to go to another state to ship. I, I drive into New York, so that's 24 hours drive, so that's like two days. And, then, and people used to think I'm mad because the amount of, I, I take in everything I have. It had clothes that I, I, I still have it. I know maybe I'm a hoarder or something. You know, it had clothes I will never wear again. Or can I winter jacket and no kind of thing. I should have just threw away them thing, but no, it's mine. So I had to keep it. It's the goodness of God. And, and I pack up that thing so, so th you know, that when it come out, it's only my eyes I could have see through the window just to make sure I have enough view. Because everything in there, I ain't renting no truck, nothing, I have a car. It's a bend, I, I'm going to maximize it. Brand new. 
And I gate it had about 10 miles on it. You understand? So I, I put a couple hundred going to New York and back, you know, driving from where I was. And then I went back to the dealership and I say, I had to sell the vehicle. He said, really? He said, what's wrong? He said, well, you know, uh, going to the Caribbean. Going back to the Caribbean. He said, the Caribbean? You have to be careful down there, you know. I hear the food down there real spicy. <laughs> he having conversation with me about Trinidad. You understand? Telling me I had to be careful. Yeah, and, he, and it's, you know, we had different color skin. I don't know what's wrong with he. And I saw, I say, how much you'll give me for the vehicle? You know, they give me back every cent I pay for the vehicle. Every cent. I had, the, he said, this vehicle is in pristine condition. I don't see no reason why we can't give you back everything. I get back my full payment. That had to be good. Yes, and everything because he, uh, I was, um, you know, they gave you the Mercedes, da 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 da. I, in, I say, Lord, you're good. And, and that's why I'm here today because of the goodness of God. I've learned in season be obedient. And I say, Lord, I given up this one. But the next one, I keep in that one. It ain't reach yet, but when it reach, a little vex, you know. I give up one to get one. Can I be real? At the end of the day, God, we can, God will never owe us. Can I, can I talk to somebody? At the end of the day, you know, God will, is no man's debtor. That was the word that God says. Everything we give up for God, he will give back to us and more. Can I, can I talk to somebody on the sound what I'm saying? Every blessing, every good, and every pleasant gift comes from the Lord. Everything you have is because of the goodness of God. Can I talk to somebody on the sound what I'm saying? In the midst of it all, God is the one who fights your battles. Joshua had to believe in his God. God had already worked it out against his enemies. He had melted their hearts that they wouldn't even touch them. I'm here to tell somebody today. That God is going to hide you in plain sight. Your enemies will not find you. They will be looking for you to do you harm, but they will not be able to see you. Can I talk to somebody on the side what I'm saying? God is getting ready to give you your rest. There are seasons in your life that you ought not to fight, but you ought to rest and to recuperate and, and to see things begin to turn around. I don't know who I'm talking. They may come in after you. They're searching for you. Just like he, he did it for Elijah, you know. Yes, they're searching for Elijah. Elijah right there and they can't find him. Can I, can I be real? And Obadiah say when Elijah tell Obadiah, go and tell the king, I go be right here, come and, uh, come and find me. You know, Obadiah say, but they're looking for you for years. So you're going to set me up now, I go and tell the king and he come and he look and he can't find you. You know, I did. He said, don't worry, don't worry. God have a way of hiding us in plain sight. In order for you to get your recovery. In order for you to come. To, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But somebody got to know that when you have God on your side. You have an advantage. At the end of the day it's going to work in your favor. Your testimony has to be alive. Look what the Lord has done. God is working it out. Working it out. And so. Now all the people were circumcised. The scripture says. All they that were born in the wilderness. And the Bible says, when they had done circumcises in verse 8, that they abode in the places in the camp till they were healed or made whole. So it took a while because you don't recover from that. That's a very painful thing. You know, we used to, I don't know, but we had a lot of Jewish influence in this country. You know, even the police, the only police officers, that star, yeah, that the star David. And <laughs> so we had a lot of Jewish influence. I grew up in a family where they used to circumcise. And I'm telling you, all of a sudden, you know, the grandmother would say, all right, the boys... You know, eight, year, eight, eight days old or whatever, let me circumcise. I was one of the families that belonged to that. But I don't know, God had his hand on me. It stopped on the brother just before me. <laughs> At the end of the day, 
Ah. When you think about it, <laughs> when you think about it, God have a way of just step saving you from some things. <laughs> I understand the medicinal value of certain things, but some things have to stay in certain cultures. Let them keep their thing. Not supposed to go. So we had a lot of Jewish influence. Amen. You know, let me, let's be real. Let me just, I just, just talk the truth for a bit. We have a lot of Jewish influence, you know. And so, you know, you got to understand, you know, what it felt like. And so, you know, I didn't know that I get spear until I get bigger. But at the end of the day, thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Hear what happened. The Bible says, when they encamped in Gilgad, and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. In other words, they were in the open plains. And the Bible says, and they did eat of the old corn of the land. In other words, that was the first time in over 40 years that they eat real corn and maize and they eat bread and cakes. First time. As a matter of fact, I show some of those soldiers who were born in that age, some of the people who were born in, in the wilderness, they didn't even know what a cornbread is. Or didn't even know what a boiled corn is. Can anybody understand what I'm talking about? Because they had no access to that. They, had no, they didn't know what it was. It's only the elders would have known. There are some things that, you know, that, that we had to be a particular age to know about. They didn't understand. All they knew for their entire life that the only sustenance that they had was something called manna. Manna come from heaven. So they, they grew up thinking food had just come from heaven. They didn't know that the food came from the earth planted and the trees. I, I don't know who I'm talking to. I want you to understand what this means. There comes a season in, in your life where all the handouts will begin to stop because God is going to bless you with your own. Uh, it, it's good to have a blessed the, the mother had their own, the father had their own, but blessed is a child that has their own. I'm talking to somebody who is stopping depending on people that God is going to open doors for yourself. That favor going to come upon your life. That whatsoever you put your hands to will begin to prosper. Can I talk to somebody? I am here to speak to somebody who knows that this is my day. This is my season. I know I had to depend on this person to get this. Uh, and I had to depend on this person to get that. But when God opens a door for you, can I let you know? No man can shut it. The children of Israel were eating corn for the first time. Boiled corn, roast corn. My God, all kind of wheat bread. My God, they never tasted like that, anything like that before. Anything. And you have to understand that wilderness was real wilderness. It did not know wild grapes or wild mango or wild corn. And you have to understand in the midst of the, you, you would think, you know, when you talk about wilderness, you go see, you go find some kind of tree. They had one diet for 40 years. That was not an easy thing. And so when they complain about the manna and God begin to let manna come through their nose and then he feed them quail. You understand? All they want, all they want meat? Meat had to come through their nose. And I'm grateful in the midst of it. Now these, they have come to the promised land and they were eating something that the Lord blessed. And I've learned in this season whatever God blessed, it's good to eat. A lot of people who have problem with certain things, good luck with that. I'm an equal opportunity eater. All right? If something prevents you from eating certain things, call me. I will help you out in that manner. All right? It is what it is. You know, that's my job to help you, to make sure that, you know, so you, you don't eat this, you don't eat that. Okay, thank you. I will get it out of your refrigerator for you. You know, I don't want that temptation to remain there so you would fall and you had to, oh God, uh, you understand? But I didn't mean to. I have a partner of mine's, um, a blind partner, so I'll let you know who it is. He uncle could real make curry crab. And he said, boy, anytime you come up, boy, I have to get my uncle up to now. Uncle can't make curry crab for me yet, but we go, we go talk, you understand? He said, boy, the sad part is his religion, his church, 
doesn't allow him to eat crab. Right? Shellfish. And, and if you go to Jerusalem, you know, the Jews don't eat that. But, you know, the first Jewish trip I made, first time I went, first time I went we eat real kosher, only Jewish thing. Lamb and thing. I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of lamb. My wife like that. Me, not a big fan. I go eat the goat, I go eat the chicken and whatever thing. But I like my seafood. Any food I see, I just eat. You know, I like that. You know. And so, this last time we went last year with Bishop Ali and his team, they carry us in the last day by some Arabs. Christian Arabs, you know. They're not, um, you know, they love the Lord and everything. They're not Jews. They, you know, and where we were, it has certain parts that the Jews cannot go, really. It has certain parts in Israel that Jews themselves can't go. All right? They can't work in, that, in them areas. So, you know, the only person who go probably is the driver, you know, or whoever. But all the tour guys had to be, you know, Palestinians and whatever. And so they went to this Palestinian Aram place. And guess what's on the menu? Seafood. Shrimp. I could not believe. You sure that is not artificial shrimp? You sure that like tofu? You understand? I could not believe it. When I see things like crab and shrimp and thing and, 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 and mussel and I'm like, what? We, we, we supposed to be here? <laughs> because I know these people are very strict with the thing. Don't mess with that. But they did it just for us. And so when all of them who are trying to stay kosher, I said, good luck with you. You all, you all don't want the shrimp? All they want to stay kosher, good luck. Can I have the plate of shrimps, please? And I sit down and that thing tastes so good. <laughs> they, you know the Bible says stolen things are still sweet. Because <laughs> you really wasn't supposed to be eating the ticket the people that land, but we were there, they serve it. I really enjoyed the meal. It has something, you know, after the first day, the same thing. No matter is a in a buffet, it's plenty of stuff to eat, but you know, you go taste everything after three days. You did ten days. When you reach the ninth day, can I be real? You just want something different, then? Let me be real, no man. Yeah, as much as you love macaroni pie and stew chicken, you know, and curry crab and dumpling, can I let you know it has certain days you just want something else? You know, and and these people heard our prayer and we ate something else. The children of Israel only had manna. And, and only the incident where God had to give them quail because they wanted meat. And then, they, of course, they didn't want that again. Lord, you go eat the manna. <laughs> because at the end of the day, the quail started to come out of their nose. They said, no, nah, no, nah, we want that again. We're sorry, we repent. And so they, they continue in the manna. And now that God released them, hear what the Lord told to Joshua. He said, the Lord said unto Joshua in verse 9, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off of you. Wherefore the name of this place is Gilgal. In other words, they came out of Egypt, but the reproach of Egypt was still in them. And I'm grateful to God that sometimes we just come out of our thing, but sometimes the thing does still be in us. And I always tell people, you don't get saved the first day you'll get saved. You know? I want you to understand what I mean by that. You don't get fully saved. The first day that you get saved. Salvation is a journey. It's a walk. The first day you get saved, can I let you dip in the water? But somebody mash your toe, some things might come out of your mouth. Let's be real. You know when you get saved? When somebody mash your toe and you say, bless the Lord, sister. God bless you. I know you didn't do it for spite. That's when you know you get saved, you know. Because you would have fixed them. What are you calling my name in that foolishness for? You know, you hear them tell a lie on you and a rumor and they pull in your name. You would have found out, who is that, who is that? But God has have a way. God bless them, yes. They don't know who they're fighting against. Because they're fighting against my God. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Your language just change. How you would respond to people just change. Your attitude has changed. That's when salvation comes in your life. 
So the reproach, you just know when that reproach gets rolled off for you. Some of the things you used to do, you will do them no more. Some of the places you, you lose a taste for certain things. Can I, can I let you know? You know, certain things like, you know, if you like, you know, to get the, the journey. All right? Some of you don't understand what I'm talking about. Very good. All right? But the folks who understand what I'm talking about. And the blue, you understand? And the smoon off. And the baileys. Right? I, I'm watching all these Sulas, uh, the people who understand what I'm talking about. I know I don't watch only with Cookie, all right? Because <laughs> all, all they understand what I'm talking about. Right? All they're not supposed to know. The people who looking at me strange, I see, all right, them see, but some of them, <laughs> some of them, all they're watching at me. <laughs> it has take a while. Can I be real? You know, and you, you, you say a little for the stomach sake sometimes, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, you, and sometimes you, you, you have to take four because you're like, you have four stomach, you know? You know, but wherever. But it had days when you know God has really made the difference in your life. That don't bother you. People offering that to you and you don't want it. No, I good, I good. At the end of the day, because God has made that difference. Can I talk to somebody? But that is when the reproach have rolled off of your life. And your testimony is remaining intact. I don't know who I'm talking to. Amen. I, I know that God is making a difference in your life. The fact that you've been here and, and God is changing you little by little. There are some things you used to do. You ain't do them no more. Can I talk to somebody? You ain't no liar. You ain't no cuss word no more. God has turned your life around. Jehovah turned my life around. He turned my life around. Can anybody testify? And so they eat of the unleavened cakes and, and they begin to eat of the good of the land. And the Bible says the manna stop. I'm here to declare to you this afternoon as we pray that God is getting ready to bless you to eat the good of the land. But the word of God says if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If Joshua wasn't obedient, if he had, he had listened to people who were probably telling them, boy, we don't need to do that right now. Let me, let me wait before we, you know, can I let you know they would have never been able to eat the good of that land. And I'm here to let you know, forget people, be obedient to God and watch him lead you into the promised land. I want you to stand right where you are as we get ready for Holy Communion. I want to declare the blessing of the Lord over you and over your home, over your family. I want to speak the testimony of God to be yours. I want the favor of God to follow you. In all that you do, you will see the favor of God. Lift your hands towards heaven right now. Father, with our hands lifted, we are saying thank you. Thank you that you are the one leading us and ordering our steps. Thank you that you are the one making a way for, for us. Thank you that you are the one fighting our battles. Father, today we say you have brought us a mighty long way. Thank you for removing the reproach of our sin from off of our backs. God, we could have lost our way, but you were there for us. You ordained us and you ordained strength into us. I thank you in this moment, God, that I can honor you with every fiber of our being. I can say, Lord, your good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you for releasing your grace, God. There's a, a grace that you give to us. There's a witness and a testimony. God, look what you've done. Uh, look where you brought me from. I've been through the mountains. I've been through the valleys. I've been through the fires. I've been through the floods. But here I am. I'm still standing after all I've been through. I'm alive. And so we honor you. Oh, God. And so, Lord, we give you the praise that belongs to your name. Oh, God. You've been a good God. You've been a good God. Oh, God, you're worthy of our praise. Is there anybody grateful this, this evening of the goodness of God, that the fact that you're still here, you're still standing, that his grace is covering you, his presence is upon you, he's rolling back the reproach away, the shame is coming out of your eyes. And you remember that you when people were ashamed of you and people didn't want to associate with you, but look at you now, look what the Lord has done, what the Lord has changed, oh. Oh. 
Because you move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your performing. There is nothing that's impossible in the sand. You move mountains, cause you move You cause hearts to fall with your Perform miracles. Perform Yes, I'm standing. Yes, I'm standing here. Only because. And I'm standing. And I'm standing here. Only because you made The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance. As a father, we bless these emblems today, God. And as we participate, let us participate worthily. We believe by faith we are participating of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. That our healing, our blessing, our deliverance is coming. That this communion is putting that seal upon us. This blood covenant, oh God. Because just like you did it with Joshua and, and the children of Israel, that blood covenant and circumcision, we have a blood com covenant in this communion. This is a blood covenant just like you did. And so God, we'll be obedient and eat the good of the land. And God, I thank you for the witness of it today. God, thank you. Bless it unto our bodies in Jesus' name. If you're participating, just remain standing. Our deacons and our ushers will serve you and we will participate together. Because you move mountains, you cause to fall with your power. You perform There is nothing that's impossible. Standing here only because, and we're standing here only because you are way make miracle promise light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Every heart. Touching every heart. I worship. I worship. I worship. You are here. You are here. Changing lights around. Changing lights around. I worship. I worship. I worship. Cause you are. Cause you 
Bible says in the night that Jesus was betrayed he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me shall we participate of the body of Christ in remembrance of his ultimate sacrifice by faith this morning in Jesus name he also took the cup and when he had supped, he said, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Shall we participate of the cup? The blood. The blood that atones and revives and renews and replenish. Let's do it in remembrance of him. Shall we participate of the cup in Jesus' name? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your witness and for your testimony. You may have your seat. You want to get ready to worship the Lord with our giving. Giving is an act of worship. We're so grateful that God is sending help. We already started our Sangri Gandhi project. We've done the excavation. Getting ready to build a bridge to the land. And, and now we can set to line up the building and do the foundation. I believe God. I believe God is able to provide and many of us various tiers of giving there the gold giving is you give one week's worth of salaries which comes up to be ten thousand dollars simple as it is one week work there's a silver giving where you give half a week uh, twenty five thousand of course the bronze when you give three thousand you don't have to give it all at once you can give it in parts we do appreciate if you give more than that you're at the platinum level we're grateful for what God is doing he's helping us we're believing that God is going to win that battle and there's going to be a testimony we'll have a new location in the San Gandhi area to God be the glory great things he has done and so father bless the giving of your people we declare abundance to replace lack and insufficiency in our lives thank you for it today in Jesus name amen if you need an envelope the ushers will get one to you just put your hand in the air they will get one for you thank you for your giving thank you for being obedient in this season and we sow into the kingdom of God and God will do what he said that he will do he's not a man that he will lie he will come true and so father thank you God for releasing the finance that we need in Jesus name we give you some quick announcements while we are receiving your giving. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for those who tithe and your tithing. Uh, we are so grateful for it. Um, we're getting set for our... Uh, I'll be here with you on Wednesday for Wednesday deliverance. We will be a communion service as well as we honor the Lord. We're thanking God for what he's doing in here. Um, we will be doing an outreach in San Fernando on the last Sunday in the month as well. That fifth Sunday I believe there's a fifth Sunday in this month and and we will be going out on the streets and to witness for the kingdom of God amen and so we're giving God all the praise all all the honor and the favor of God in it that God is doing I'm so grateful for what the Lord is doing in this season anybody grateful grateful to be alive the promises of God is yea and amen the blessing is going to make rich. Huh? Is in, is in June next month. All right. And so we thanking God in that fifth Sunday, we're going to come back to do an outreach where we will be fourth Sunday, Port of Spain, fifth Sunday is San Fernando. Uh, God is good. Amen. We've been having a great time in Tobago. God has been 
you know, so good in so many ways. And so we looking forward to, I hope you get your tickets already or you're already getting your tickets for this Tobago um, anniversary service. It's the 27th of July. Get your tickets, you know, be there or email or be square as they say. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in Tobago. Amen. If you want to stay longer after that, you're free to go on the beach if you choose to. Those of you who are flying back, the, the last flight is 9.45. So you have the whole evening to go and take a dip if you choose to. Or go and break your foot by the roller skating place on the opposite side. You know, we just get to skate for free. We are hoping we can get our bligh again. Um, you know, we can skate for free. Those of you who want to get back all your childhood days, as I say, bring back the old time days. Not me. Let the old time days stay where it is. Amen. Amen. I not, I not one of them who, you know, in nostalgic, you know, remember when we used to, yes, I remember, well, let it stay there. You know, I'm grateful for today. Amen. Amen. Grateful for today because those old time days were starvation for me. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> you know, you, you enjoy picking, pitching marbles and picking mango because mango was your food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, I, I was driving up on the main road and on around Laventil area there, and I see them fellas, and it just remind me of me, boy. They have a whole bag of mango, <laughs> and you know, it's not even a bag. The fella like he take off his jersey to put the mango in it. He didn't even have a bag. You understand? And he had his whole bag with the jersey full with mango. And all them other fellas begging him, like he's the only one who could have climbed, probably. <laughs> so he climbed and he fully bagged and thing, and everybody had to eat from him. I say, wow, I remember those days. You understand? I, I don't want to go back there. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord had delivered you out of those things. You understand? You're searching mango tree, every fruit tree, orange tree, gugu bev tree, every kind of thing you're eating. Because you yeah, know if you get that meal in the night, but to God be the glory. Amen. And you know, when I, and so when, you know, you see your children want to throw away good food. Hey, you know, hard. And you, then you tell them about the oh, good old days. You understand? I can tell you, you used to eat meat once on a Sunday. Yeah, it had no meat during the week. Yeah, man, it's rice and peas. You understand? No meat. Sunday, you eat your meat and you enjoy your meat. And of course, if you take too long to eat your meat, one of your brothers or sisters go grab it out of your plate. And there's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, your meat is to defend it with your fork. <laughs> leave it alone. Yes, I'm taking too long. You know how we just eat? You eat everything and you leave your meat for last. Uh -huh. That is a big risk. <laughs> but to God be the glory. God has brought us through. And we are survivors. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I now turn back over to our chairperson, Brother Devon. Blessings to you. Blessings. Thank you, Apostle Justin. Let's give it up to Apostle for that awesome word. I have to agree with Apostle. Back in the old time days, we had um, the latrine, right? Thank God for the latrine. But, you know, uh, let's say 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the night. You're entering in the latrine and you're hearing some sounds. And you don't want anything touching any part of your body. You will fly out. <laughs> right? So, thank God for now. We appreciate now. I, I do acknowledge what uh, Apostle spoke even in regards to opportunities. And I try to even encourage a lot of folks because he started his me message with that. Um, where God brings opportunities and we need to grab our opportunities. Don't let too many things pass us by. Thank you for that word again, Apostle. Very, very good word. That said, we want to invite Pastor Victoria to give some great announcements. Welcome her. Praise the Lord. So we have a celebration today. Amen. We had two persons that were baptized in our last baptism from San Fernando. Amen. So two of our newest members, we just want to call them this morning, Brother Wayne Stephen and Sister Brenda Drakes. 
please come up. These are our newest member of Kingdom Community Fellowship Foundation family. Amen. So, brother, when according to the Holy Scripture, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So we want to present you with your certificate. Amen. May you be blessed and may you serve him with your whole heart. Sister Brenda Drakes, this is your certificate of baptism according to the Holy Scripture in John 3, 5. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We want to welcome you into Kingdom Community Fellowship Foundation family. Continue to serve God. Amen? Amen. So, we did not get the opportunity the last two Sundays, I believe it was, to pick up our second offering. So, we want to continue picking up our offering as we have our events for the year to come up. Um, so, Sister Susan is going to pass around once you have, we'd like you to give. Amen? Because this is going to go towards whether it is our Mother's Day, Father's Day, our Pastor's Appreciation and other events that we would have coming up. Amen? So I just want to, um, in the absence of my husband, I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of our service. Amen? Thank you for taking a time to come out and fellowship one with the other. Before I leave and call back up um, Brother Devon, I would like to see Joshua, David, Carol, Victoria, and Kimberly after service. Thank you. Give it up to Pastor Victoria. Okay, let's talk about birthdays, anniversaries. Are, are we celebrating any birthdays this week to come or this week on? Anyone celebrating birthdays? Okay, we have no birthdays. What about anniversaries? Anyone celebrating an anniversary? Oh, no anniversaries. Okay, well, perhaps next week we may have some birthdays. Okay, let's move on to visitors. Anyone visiting Kingdom Community Fellowship Foundation for the very first time? Everybody is family. Okay, that's good. That's good. Beautiful. We do invite our online viewers. If you do not have a home church, feel free to come to us in San Fernando Kingdom Community Fellowship Foundation. That said, I have two announcements. One is that we have our men's ministry on the third Saturday of this third or fourth. Fourth Saturday. Thanks. Fourth Saturday, I like a few more brother just watch me there and I get the correction. The fourth Saturday of this month, we usually have it on the first, but based on different circumstances, we had to make a change. So the fourth Saturday of this month, if you haven't been a part of the men's ministry, uh, please join us, brothers. Uh, for those who, you ladies, you all have a guy, a, a young man, an older uh, gentleman who would like to be a part of this ministry, please invite them. We'll be right here. On Saturday, the fourth Saturday of this month, from 4 to 6 p.m., we talk very honestly, and it's meant to encourage the men in society. We see a lot of violence. We see a lot of things happening. So we want to have a positive uh, role in society, okay? The other announcement I have is that Kingdom Community Fellowship Foundation, the Port of Spain branch, has a talk the thing. I don't know if anyone has seen it. Has anyone seen talk the thing as yet? Amen. <laughs> so we have talk the thing, talk the thing with the youths. Oh, we, we have it, Shreen? Oh, okay, play it. Uh, for a youth ministry, we are embarking on a project of dealing with different topics from this. Okay, okay so they're working on the volume and so on. The young person's responses, their views on a particular issue, and hear it from their angle, their perspective. Like, yes. <laughs> that's going in my head. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. It's not going to happen again. <laughs> Just me. Being my human nature, I'll be like, Jesus, what are you talking about? <laughs> because if they're ready, hit on this cheek. I'm going to turn and give them the next cheek. I'm not taking nobody slapping me. We are Christians, and this is the correct thing to do. Um, honestly, my brain kind of went blank there for a second. <laughs> Why you talking about again? Talk the thing. Talk the thing now. Nah. Talk the thing. Talk the thing. Oh, no. 
Okay, so that's the talk, the thing. Give the user a hand for what they are doing. I have my dear brother, brother Kendrick, uh, as well, assisting us in that venture. Folks, everyone is invited if you want to come. This Sunday, we are starting at... So, sorry, Saturday, thank you. Saturday, we are starting at 2. The recording starts at 2, but for persons to be a little early, come a little early, probably around half 1, so we could, you know, set up stuff and you all can see how things happen. Um, we did a first recording last month, and, and just to give you all a little insight, it's about music. I wouldn't give too much. I'll just say it's about music. And the youths are very real, very passionate. And they'll be saying some things that will be surprising some folks, especially the gospel artists. <laughs> so look out for that. You all are invited. Port of Spain, branch, 2 p.m. Come half one. That will be better. So you all can listen to our conversation. That said, we have reached the close of our service, so I want to ask of Pastor Sunil if you would be so kind to come up and close us in prayer. Let's welcome Pastor Sunil. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you Lord for today. Thank you for health and strength. We thank you that we were able to come out today and be in the house of God. I pray blessing upon each and every one of us. That this week is going to be a blessed week for us. In the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for our apostle and the word that was brought forth to strengthen us spiritually and to bless us in every area of our life. Thank you for each and every one of us. Favor and blessing upon everyone. I break every stronghold against your life. You are blessed and you are highly favored. In the name of? Have a wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>